guys and welcome to my channel. My name is Sonia and this is my cooking channel that you're watching. And in this video today, I will be sharing a Kentucky Fried Chicken um, dupe recipe as well as a homemade baked mac and cheese. This video is also part of a collaboration that is hosted by DIY from house to home and she had asked us to share our family's comfort food recipes. My family absolutely loves fried chicken in any shape and form they can get it, from sandwiches to schnitzels, so I thought this would be a good one to share. However, I have never actually made the Kentucky Fried Chicken. I have made, um, I think I have made uh, um, Chick-fil-A's chicken. I had made my own, uh, just normal fried chicken. I've made chicken schnitzel many times but I thought I'd try something different and see if my family enjoys this recipe. I had found the recipe on Pinterest. The ingredients was fairly simple. It did need quite a bit of uh, seasonings, but I had most of them on hand. I think I only had to buy one. So um, I ha have everything here now. The mac and cheese I have made many times before, so I know what to expect and what I need. And it is delicious and my kids absolutely love it. And I thought the two go well together and they are definitely comfort food, something that I don't make very often. The mac and cheese more often than the fried chicken because I used to run a home daycare, so I used to serve it to daycare quite a bit, but and my kids used to love taking it for lunches when they were in taking lunches to school. So without further ado, I need to stop babbling. I will get cooking. So here are the ingredients that you will need for mac and cheese. You're gonna need some milk or cream. I used milk, old cheddar, as well as macaroni. I love using this brand because it is uh, Durham semolina rather than uh, white uh, flour. And then you'll need unsalted butter and some flour as well as salt. I also brought the water to a boil in my pasta cooker and I just added a little bit of salt and once it's boiling I'm just adding pasta, the normal pasta preparation. <laughs> no need to explain this more but I do love uh, using a pasta cooker. I think it just makes uh, the whole draining part process a lot easier. Now I'm going to get my sauce ready and I am adding and melting butter first. Once my butter is completely melted, I am going to be sprinkling in some of my flour and stirring it right at the same time because you don't want the flour to burn or clump up. And I will be stirring it and cooking it until the flour is golden brown. And then at this time, I will be adding some milk. This took about two, three minutes. I, and I slowly add the milk just so it doesn't clump up or burn as well more so so it doesn't clump up and I'm going to stir this const continuously constantly you don't want to stop because then your milk will burn and I'm going to do this for until it comes to a gentle boil which took about three minutes so now that it's ready I will be adding my cheese and I'm adding uh, leaving about half a cup of cheese behind but adding the rest of it. I'm, I will add the rest of the half a cup at the end uh, before I put my mac and cheese into the oven. So and I stir this up until the cheese is fully melted and then I'm going to add it to my pasta. I make sure that all of my noodles are well co coated and stir stirred up really well, like I said, to make sure that all the noodles are coated. And then I prepare my baking pan. I am using my Pampered Chef rectangular baker to do so. It is very well seasoned, as you can see, um, but I season it anyways. I just don't want things to get stuck to it. 
with cheese you never know and I don't typically use cooking spray once in a while for baking but for most of the cooking I just use olive oil and a brush and I just spread it around and then I dump in my macaroni and then I sprinkle the remaining cheese over top of it. I did end up adding a little bit more cheese to it. Uh, now it's time for it to go into the oven and I have preheated the oven to 375. I am not covering it up. Uh, I'm just putting it in for about 10-15 minutes until cheese melts. And now it's time to move on to getting my chicken ready. I have five chicken breasts. I have some flour. I have salt and pepper. Uh, I just use the freshly grind up salt and pepper, some paprika, and then for the spices I added them to my mortar and I added thyme, onion powder, garlic powder, some parsley, some oregano, some uh, tarragon leaves as well as celery salt and some poultry seasoning and then you will need three eggs to go with it so the first thing that I do is I uh, use my little th mortar to ground up and mix up all the seasonings once my herbs are all nicely blended in there, I move on to my chicken. I have to switch out my cutting boards because I don't like to cut chicken on top of the wood. I know that they say you can, but um, I just, uh, I, I don't know, it just gives me a little bit of bejeebers. So I take my uh, seasonings and I mix them up with some flour. You could also put this in a Ziploc bag and mix it all up if you'd like to and then just toss the chicken in there and get it mixed up by uh, swooshing it around in a Ziploc bag. But I've always just done it this way so that is the way I'm doing it and I also scrambled all of my, my three eggs. Uh, to get my chicken ready I cut it in half and then I tenderize it but I also cut off some of that fat that's on there. I just think it doesn't taste really good if the fat is on there while um, when it's all breaded. Now I did totally think that my camera was on while I was breading the chicken but it's the simple step dip it into egg and then into the flour and while I was getting my chicken ready I also preheated my deep fryer to 350 and I'm using canola oil inside of it and I am dropping my chicken gently into the hot oil you want your oil to be preheated well and ready before you drop your chicken in because if you just drop it in a not ready oil the breading will just all soak it up and you will have one greasy chicken. Uh, I was able to fit about three pieces and I cooked uh, these three pieces for about four minutes. Uh, depending on the thickness mine were fairly thin I, if they're thicker obviously add a little bit more time and I always always cut the first piece just to make sure the timing was right and make sure that chicken is cooked because you do not want to have raw chicken. I do flip the chicken just once just to make sure that the coating on top gets the same amount of crispiness. This only I only keep it this way for about 30 seconds or so. You don't necessarily need to flip the chicken inside the deep fryer because um, it should cook it evenly. I don't know why I do it, I just do it. <laughs> Once the chicken is done, I lift it off the deep fryer and now you can let the chicken sit for a little bit. I'm just going to make sure that this piece is cooked. It is the thicker piece and that will tell me if my timing was right or not. And it was right and I also like to taste my chicken at this time if it's cooked and making sure that the seasoning is right. Mine I felt it needed a little bit more salt so I added salt to the other pieces. 
now that my seasoning is right and I know the temperature of the, how long I should cook it, I proceed on cooking the rest of my chicken in batches. So my food is all done. Here is my mac and cheese. I think it looks absolutely beautiful. And here is the chicken and I just served it with some Greek salad that I made the day before and I had marinating in the fridge. So I would uh, like to thank the hostess for hosting this uh, collaboration. I enjoyed participating in it. Make sure to check out the playlist. I have to report that the chicken was very delicious, but in my opinion did not taste anything like KFC recipe. So just putting it out there, but it was very delicious and I added some honey sriracha on top of it. If you enjoy these type of videos, please give me a thumbs up so I know. And if you're not subscribed, I would love it if you considered subscribing and pressing the notification bell so you don't miss out any of my future uploads. So until next time, hope you guys have a wonderful day and thank you so much for watching. I think it's